So I hope you've all got a doll, a teddy bear, anything that you can wrap with arms and legs to practice with. Because um, I'm going to go through my pretty much my go-to wrapping technique. Ultimately, when I'm working with a baby, I want to keep them settled. I want to keep them, you know, comfortable and make them feel secure. So at the beginning of a session, if I've got an awake baby, if I've got a fussy baby, um, unhappy baby, whatever the, the, comp, like the cause is for it to be awake or unsettled, I want to try and calm that baby down by wrapping them. This doll's very different to the one I'm using and it doesn't matter what sort of doll you're working with or practicing with, but my advice is to practice wrapping as much as you possibly can because it's knowing where to place your hands and that's what we're going to go through. All right. I've actually never done this before. <laughs> Well, 20 years ago, but that's not the same wrapping as the same baby. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> All right, so at the very end of one of your wraps, and these ones are about two metres long, I believe. So I always start with the wrap just across my legs. You, can, you don't have to do it on your legs. I know not everyone's got long legs. So I usually give myself a decent amount so that I can come back over the top of the baby. So what we want when we position the baby down you've got your wraps ready, is you want the top of that wrap to be just around the back of the shoulders. So Garrett set up a camera angle up here so you can see visually from above. Now, it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed, um, which way you do this, obviously. So now that I've got this side here and you can see it lined up with the top of the shoulders there, and you can bring that hand across the chest, so the hand, the arm, with the short side. So what we want to do is give that a really nice pull and keeping our hand here on top of the baby's sort of forearm wrist, we can pull that over and then once you kind of pull it over, you're replacing your hand with the fabric, but then you need to bring that hand back so you've now got your other hand free. And then just bring this hand up here. So what we're going to do now is bring that fabric here down and you're going to basically sort of slide it in underneath the bum there and the weight of the baby. And then you can swap hands again and if you need to, you can continue to tuck that under. Now if you've got a wriggly baby, you, you want to do the arms first. Always get those arms wrapped in nice and securely. If I've got a baby that is constantly fussing on the back of their hands, um, wanting to soothe, suck, all of that kind of stuff and there's no pacifier, no dummy, then you want to wrap the hands down. But for the sake of this purpose, we can keep the hands out. There you go. She's got a very hard hand. <laughs> so the, now that your other hand is holding the back of that wrap, this is where you want to bring the other arm up and place the hand over the back of the other hand or across the chest there, yep. Depending on how flexible your baby is. <laughs> Okay, so now you've got the other part of the wrap. And you can see it's got a lot of give. Now if you pull it too tight, obviously that's gonna eventually become so tight around the baby, it's not gonna be able to move. What you want is to still have that bit of give. Like if they were in the womb, they could still move a little bit. Um, you don't want to restrict all movement. Okay, so now bringing the wrap over, pulling it a little bit tighter, and then coming over, replacing your hand with the fabric and bringing that over. So then you can put your hand there on the top of the, the wrap and on the arms. That's going to help. Yeah, yep. keep it in if you like. This hand here on top of those forearms and the hand, that'll help if you just put the weight of that hand there, that'll help kind of keep a baby settled. It's quite soothing and comforting just to have that little bit of excess weight on them. It helps them, you know, feel secure. And then they get that little bit of body temperature, you know, coming through that bit of movement that they are used to. All right, so now that you've got that hand there, um, depending on the baby, if you've got a really strong baby, a big baby, you might need to go around the arms again. So that will depend on your baby. So always remember that. If the, um, now yeah, so you're just gonna have to gauge whether that baby needs extra support around those arms.
but for the sake of the exercise, we will go around one more time. So keeping that hand there, you can pull that wrap down so it's nice and tight. And then what I like to do is bring my hand in nice and flat here, so beside the baby. And then it's like you're kind of gonna lift the baby gently there. So now that that wrap is secure, those arms aren't gonna go anywhere. You can lift the baby's head up. So supporting the back of the head and the shoulders there with one hand. Then you can bring that wrap around to replace the hand with the other one. So I've just kind of like slid my hand around ultimately and then I'm just replacing it. So the wrap's not really moving but this part of my hand's keeping the wrap in place which is exactly what you've got. So then you can use the other hand to bring that wrap around. So it's all the way I do it, I suppose, is to create little movement for the baby, especially if they're starting to settle. So you want to keep them nice and, and calm. So then coming back around the front as you lower the baby's head. And then if you're just tidying wherever you need to. But you can see as well, the legs are nice and free still. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is the exact same thing again. I've got that wrap pulled across here. No longer need to muck around with the hands or arms or keep my hand there because now we've got that extra support across the front. This time the wrap is going to come around again, but we're going to pull it up towards the opposite shoulder. How's everyone going? All right, so now that that wrap's in place, we're going to pull it down and we're going to come up to the opposite shoulder. So again with the, op the hand coming up to support the baby's head, around to grab the head with the opposite hand and bringing that fabric up to the shoulder. So this is why when I start at the beginning, I've got that material down below the shoulders so it doesn't get too bulky up around the neck and the, um, and the shoulders. All right, so now as we pull this up here, we'll pull that down a little bit there so it doesn't get caught. What we need to do is use the shoulder to anchor the wrap. So if you can see there how I've pulled that quite tight and it's just gathered and it's gonna come across that shoulder. All right, so this is where um, you can come down around the bottom. We're not going to position the legs just yet because once you bring that down underneath the bottom there, the weight of the baby is going to hold the wrap in place. So now we can position the legs. And when I'm moving the legs, I suppose, into position, what we want is to keep those legs up. So sometimes when babies kick out and push down, they their legs sort of come down like this. And then they, you end up with like, I liken it to a worm, you know, the way that it's been wrapped, it sort of stretches out. All right, so now we're going to get that leg, first leg up, and I try to aim to get the heel into sort of that joint. Yours is probably going to be a little different. You'll have to stack it's yours. Big feet. <laughs> Very big feet. <laughs> so stacking those legs up so that they're sort of flat with the bottom. And then you can continue to pull that wrap down around the outside. So I find doing it this way and then pulling it up, it actually stops them from kicking those legs down. So that's why we want to bring that wrap um, from the top of the shoulder down in underneath the bottom. And when I'm doing my unwrapped workflow, when I get down to taking that last layer off, I can pull the wrap around the outside and I can get a beautiful wrapped shot like that in a prop or on the posing bag. But we can come up now towards that shoulder, opposite hand, picking up the head again, and then coming down around the back of the shoulders, and you can lower the head there. See, look at this, you nailed it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> and then you can just keep coming around, but this is where um, when I am wrapping to do like a full body wrap or something like that, I can bring that fabric up here over the baby. So this is my base wrap. So if I'm 
going to then go over the baby with my crisscross or whatever. Okay. You've run out of wrap. <laughs> you can keep, keep going around. Your wrap might be a bit shorter than mine. And that's the, the whole thing, like depending on the length of your wrap, everything. So this is where I would have my base wrap now. So I've got the baby in a nice comfortable position and I would continue to put another wrap over the outside to create that extra support um, so that I could put the baby down if it was awake to get some awake shots. I often find though with the movement and oh, Sherry's run out of wrap as well. <laughs> That's all right. Um, <laughs> definitely more than 14 days old. <laughs> yeah. Um, but ultimately, you've, you're creating a ball. That's what you want to do. So with that, um, like this, if I'm unwrapping the baby, which you'll see in the video, then I will be able to pull that wrap down around the legs like that. And then I've got legs visible. She doesn't have very good shoulders either, but that's all right. So we've got our beautiful wrap. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. We're having some fun.